welcome to another episode of the Two Photo Nuts. And if you notice, there is only me. But because of the World Wide Web, we're going to do an interview with a very good friend of mine who's into balloon and aerial photography. And its name is Jenny Wolf. So although I'm sitting in the studio by myself, I am not alone. So Jenny, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Bob? Good. So this episode is going to be all about you and aerial photography and balloons, because I think that is so interesting. But let's start with, you're actually a balloon pilot. Yeah. So for balloons, you need an FAA certified pilot's license. And uh, you can get, in the U.S. anyway, there's two ratings. There's private pilot, where you can go out and fly your friends and family. And there's commercial rating, where you can fly for hire. And I actually have a commercial rating. Okay, so we, we can actually hire you to actually take me up on a balloon to take pictures. Yes. So do you actually do that? Um, I don't do a lot of commercial flights. Um, usually if I'm at a balloon rally and they have some paying passengers, I'll take them to help defray costs, but I don't do that as a business. A lot of people around here do fly as contract pilots as their livelihood. Oh, that's a very interesting thing. So I've had an opportunity, and, and I blew it. I didn't take it in, while well, I was in Winnipeg. Like, you know, I should beat myself in the back of the head, but I think it would be an awesome thing. But you're also a photographer, and you shot film, and now you've gone in, into the digital world. I'm not even going to worry about the film part of it, but I want to make sure that people know that you've been shooting for a while. Yeah. So I've, I've seen some of your work, which is just awesome. I love your work and, on the balloons inside of it. So let's talk about what equipment you're using. Okay. And uh, let's, so if I'm away and I'm going to take a flight on a balloon, what would you suggest to bring with um, me? Okay. Uh, I'm using Canon equipment right now. Um, looking to probably upgrade soon. But uh, if you want to go out and shoot a balloon rally, um, there's a lot of steps involved. There's the whole inflation process that starts on the ground. And if you're doing that kind of stuff, a wide angle is really good because balloons tend to be very large, larger than most people realize. And so if you're up close and personal, you want to use wide angle stuff. Once you get in the air, you're going to want to use some zoom lenses to, you know, bring the other balloons closer. Or if you see any wildlife on the ground to get a good view of that. Okay. So would you suggest using a monopod inside the basket? Um, no. And there's a few reasons. I mean, on the ground, things are happening pretty fast, so I don't recommend a tripod. You could probably use a monopod if you wanted, but it might limit, because a lot of things you want to get down low or get strange angles. Um, in the basket, balloons are very stable, because you're going with the wind. You're not, the only movement is other people moving in the basket. So there really isn't room for things like tripods and monopods. And pilots generally would request you leave it at home just safety reasons to have something like that bouncing around in the basket can get dangerous yeah okay yeah so yeah, yeah I, first thing went through my mind was i would probably carry a monopod because i want to take less room but i want to be steady now see you're telling me the basket is actually pretty steady to be in oh yeah. okay it's not interesting i would have thought it would have been swinging but that's why we have you here to ask these questions <laughs> okay. yep. so how high are we going um, that depends on the conditions and the pilot. Um, usually a few hundred feet up to a few thousand feet. Okay, so you're depending on the winds then? Exactly. So when you launch, you have no idea where you're going? Um, you have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> we put up uh, helium balloons, and so you can see what the wind currents are doing. And okay. the balloon has absolute control over up and down, but like you say, the wind is where you go, so you go downwind. So you have to have a truck to follow you and catch you when you get there. So which is which is a good idea. Let's let's get an understanding of the balloon. <laughs> okay, so depending on the currents, and it would depend on the altitude. So I guess there are currents in the wind. So at certain altitudes, the wind is going a different direction. Exactly. Okay. So a lot of you're you're located where? I'm in San Diego, California. Okay, so you're in San Diego, California. So depending on the uh, mountain range. Uh, yeah, we've got pretty much every type of terrain down here in Southern California. Um, 
And right on the coast here, you get very predictable winds with the uh, ocean, and you get the marine layer coming in in the evening and pushing the winds onshore. So uh, the weather here can be pretty predictable. Unfortunately, we're getting a lot of development, making it more difficult to fly. So generally, we go inland to the wine country and fly there. Uh, the wine country? The wine country in Riverside mm -hmm. County. They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> There, I'd like to do that. Would be okay. That'd be an awesome flight. Okay, so okay, so if I'm getting ready to do a balloon flight, I have to know. Well, I know the pilot's going to know the wind and the altitude that we're going to fly out. So you're controlling it that way. How long usually are we going to be in the air? Typically, a balloon flight's for an hour. Oh, okay. Okay. We usually fly at sunrise because the winds are calmest. Um, some areas you can fly at sunset an hour before yeah. launch, an hour before and land by that sunset. So. Yeah, okay, because I'm, the place I was at, I'm more used to uh, flying over the prairies. But I think flying over the mountains or through, I, around that area, would or the foothills would be awesome. That would, to me, that would be a, a more, for a photographer, that would be a lot better. So what would you prefer if you're as a photographer? Um, San Diego, before it got more developed, was one of the my favorite places to fly because we we're near the ocean. You could see the Channel Islands. You could see down to Mexico. Um, in the winter, you could see snow-capped mountains. Um, my other favorite place to fly is Teton Valley, which is a valley next to a very large mountain range. Um, oh, okay. That's not interesting. Yeah, because I, 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 I get all sorts of ideas going through my mind, but I'm not up there all the time. Well, you're no. up there all the time, so I could well imagine the thousands and thousands of pictures but then again as a photographer and a pilot you've got a pilot to balloon how often can you actually take pictures while you're up there i take very few pictures if i'm piloting i'll take a uh, if i'm flying i'll just take a compact camera that i don't have to change lenses or do anything out about it i can just pull it out and snap some pictures um if someone else is flying the balloon then i'll take all my gear and concentrate on taking Okay, so you who are a photographer, are you helping other people when you're when you're piloting? Are you helping other people to point out places to shoot and what they should be shooting? Um, I don't do that too much. <laughs> I usually just concentrate on flying the balloon and making sure the people are comfortable. Usually, it's their first flight, and so um, they may have issues with height or uh, you know just. And they're just overwhelmed and they're just taking pictures of anything anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I can understand that as well. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's probably you need a couple flights to get comfortable and understand what you're going to take pictures yeah. of. Because I know I was teasing you the other day because I had taken some pictures with my drone that were close to the, close to the trees. Right. My you question was, close. can you get this close? And you, your answer was, yeah, I touched them. <laughs> <clears throat> fly right through the trees. <laughs> yeah, right there, I go through the trees. Yeah, okay, no. That's called air brakes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How do we slow down? No, we don't put our feet out. We just run into the trees. And <laughs> uh, that's not usually recommended. <laughs> I'm say... close enough to actually reach I'd be the only one in the balloon with the, with you going. Can I have a different pilot? <laughs> <laughs> Please give me a different pilot. <laughs> You haven't even flown with me, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we're so bad. Okay, in the balloon, we're going to swap from the wide angle to the telephoto. Right. Okay. So now, is there usually other balloons with you? Are you usually in a group? Um, typically, yeah, there'll be other balloons flying. Uh, so that gives you a subject to shoot. Um, if there's a nice scenery, you always have other balloons to take pictures of. Well, yeah, because I've seen your, your images. You've got pictures of other balloons, but you've also got pictures of herds of animals underneath you. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the rules and regulations? How close do you get to these animals? There must be a distance you have to stay away from them. Um, well, typically you don't want to be um, disturbing the animals. They tend to move away from large objects that are making lots of noise anyway. Uh, You're not making any noise, are we? <laughs> You're in a balloon. Oh, the burner makes noise. Oh, does it? Okay, yeah. So I guess if you have to go up, you've got to turn the burner on to uh, to get away <clears> from it. <throat> yeah, no, I can understand that. Yeah, okay. And livestock, you don't want to scare livestock because that tends to get the owners upset. Well, yeah, I would think uh, I would think so. 
Yeah, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. So typically when you're taking people up, um, are, you ex are you explaining to them what camera they, equipment they should be using? No, most of the people I'm taking up aren't uh, really photographers. They're just people that, you know, had some event. <clears throat> Excuse me, we were coming out to go for a flight, or maybe it was a birthday, or a wedding proposal, or something like that. So, oh, okay. I don't think a lot of oh, serious photographers. A wedding proposal. Yep. Man, some so. of those. Oh, good for you. That would be interesting <laughs> to do. As long as they don't drop the ring over the side. Yeah, I guess, yeah, dropping anything over the side, <laughs> it would be gone. Yeah, no, I can understand that one as well. Okay. So, okay, so we've covered most of you're a pilot, what equipment you're using, um, any suggestions on exactly what ISO or what they should be looking for when they're, when they're in the air because you've got other balloons, other things around. I would personally, I'd be rather to fly over the mountains than, than, than the prairies. I would think that would be a lot more interesting. Flash is not going to do you any good. No, it's, it's way too much uh, to see there. Well, yeah, um, one of the good things about ballooning is we do fly at sunrise, so the lights tends to be really nice because you're getting out there early. Um, <clears throat> so it starts a little dark, you know, not too much, but uh, by the time we're flying, it's usually bright, sunny day. So ISOs are usually pretty low. You're not moving real fast. Um, it's not like stop action. Well, crazy. yeah, okay, but so uh, your ISO should be up a little bit, I would think. Yeah, you start out a little high, and then I usually keep it pretty low. You know, I tend to shoot at 100, 200 anyway. Yeah. You might want to start out at 400. Yeah, shutter, <laughs> shutter speed, I would think you would want, well, for me, I'd want to be a nice, clear picture. I don't think, I'm not into the Orton effect sort of idea, or very seldom into the or, Orton effect, or because you're going to get movement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not, this isn't really the type of photography that you're looking for good bokeh in. You want good depth of field. <laughs> <laughs> Valid point. Are you drinking beer? God thanks, girl. Iced tea. It's Ice nine o'clock in the morning. She's drinking beer. <laughs> Iced tea. <laughs> you Californians or wine. <laughs> All right. So you know what? Let's share your screen. Let's show some of your work. All right. So stare at some of your work. Okay. So this is, um, let's see. So this is uh, my husband actually inflating the balloon. <clears throat> this is a little different because it's actually a one-man balloon, so there's no basket. Okay, so explain explain that one. That's even more interesting. One-man balloon. So the balloon's going to be smaller. Yeah, the balloon's a third the size of the balloon we have that has a basket. Um, it just carries one person. You've got one propane tank, and you're sitting in a seat strapped to that propane tank. That's not interesting. Now, why is there snow on the ground? Because this is Gallup, New Mexico, in winter. They have snow in Mexico? Uh, yeah. That's even throwing yeah. me further off. That's even going to bring up a whole bunch of more questions. <laughs> and this is 4,000 feet also. So. Oh, okay, it's so we're, we're actually in the mountains in... in... New Mexico or Mexico? New Mexico. Oh, okay. Oh, isn't that interesting? One okay. of those states in the U.S. Uh, so how many people would have been at this rally? This is a larger rally. It has about 250 balloons. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay. Next one. Next one. This is one that you've seen. Um, we had an assignment together to do silhouettes. <clears throat> And so this is something to look for when you're on the ground, um, when the balloons are inflating. You'll see a lot of people through the fabric because of the way the light comes through and they're putting things together and so forth. And so silhouettes are always a good thing to be trying to get photos of. Oh, valid point. Yeah, well, I'm presuming for a novice like me or anybody that's new to it, there'd be a lot to shoot on the ground. There is. Yeah, there would be a lot to shoot. Yeah, okay. Let's go to the next one. And this is something else you'll see as they're setting up the balloons. This is a very large commercial balloon. 
and the pilot is inside checking the rigging, um, helping pull the fabric out. You can see the basket at the other end. So I'm shooting from the top of the balloon inward. And um, it's something you can <clears throat> ask the crew as they're setting the uh, parachute top from the top of the balloon if you can put your, your head through the top and shoot inward. And they'll usually let you do that. Uh, okay, so you're actually inside the balloon. So would it would it have been a dark area? Well, I'm actually standing outside, but my head is inside through an opening. Um, oh. But yeah, it's a little darker, so you're going to have to push up your ISO in these cases. Oh, okay, isn't that interesting? Yeah, okay, and yeah. how come it's half full? Is there actually helium in there? Is it heating it? Okay, so if you look towards the basket on either side, you can see small objects. Those are inflator fans. And so they're blowing air into the balloon. And then once it's full, he'll add heat and it'll stand up. Uh, so it takes a while uh, to fill these things up. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Okay. All righty. Let's go to the next one. So this is the other end looking to the from the basket to the top. Yeah, okay. I love the colors in this one. This is an awesome shot. I love this one. Yeah. So that star-shaped area, that's the parachute that I would have been putting my head through on the other shot. Okay. If I'm coming out for the first time, and we, would the pilot mind if I uh, kind of step uh, inside the balloon and take pictures? Um, they usually won't let you in the balloon. Um, some pilots will if you take your shoes off. Um, it depends on the pilot. Commercial balloons are a little more forgiving on that. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, most private pilots are very protective over their gear because it costs lots of money to fix it but they will they'll let you you know put your head in through the top or through the side or, you know, i mean at the bottom oh, okay and, uh, so did you shoot did walking. you shoot this with a wide angle um i think i did i can't remember oh, okay because like the colors in this are just phenomenal yeah this is my wide angle yeah this is phenomenal and that's one of the things i'm sure that's you know for my first balloon flight, the first thing I'm going to be doing is be running around taking all these pictures as a balloon's being blown up and things like that. But yeah, I can certainly understand not letting you in. And if he does let you in, that yeah, the shoes have to come off. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kind of an idea. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is right at launch. So that's uh, my husband again taking off in our balloon with the basket. Okay. And uh, so you'll see, you know, everybody kind of takes off. Uh, similar times, but you got to watch each other, you know, you don't want to be bumping into each other, basket to fabric or anything. Speaking, um, speaking of takeoff, any, any advice on a takeoff from when you're, if you're in sitting in the basket? Um, no, you know, the pilot will give you a briefing, but as far as takeoff, it's just get in the basket and start enjoying the ride. You know, more important time is landing to make sure you're holding on and that's oh. when you can't really take any pictures because you don't want anything up against your face uh, when you land because sometimes it can get bumpy. Yep, yeah, no, I can understand that one. So how many balloons in your, because you do regattas, I believe, if that's the correct word, <laughs> regatta. <laughs> how many regattas are you going to do a year? Because I understand. Cause we actually call them rallies, but rallies. Um, we usually do, in the summer, we'll do about eight. Um, there's a few in the winter, so we probably do about a dozen a year. Oh wow, wow! And you're 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 just about to leave for ten weeks. Yep. Wow, ten weeks. How yep. many? First how many? Balloon, balloon rally hopping, from place to place. And you're you're hitting four states. Four states, uh, eight rallies. Wow. Yep. Okay. Next <clears throat> next That's picture. Portable. Let's go to your next picture. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. So this is the wine country that I mentioned that we normally fly over. Yeah, I love this shot as well. Eh? The it's color. Quite actually an orchard, but there's a mix of orchards and grapes in the area. Oh wow, so cool. So. So this is where you're in the balloon, and you might want to be using zoom lenses to get yeah. it tight. Yeah. No. Understandable. Let's go to the next one. This is back to that where the first area was, Gallup, New Mexico. <clears throat> okay, this one's confusing. Are we taking off or are we just scooting across? This, you're in the air and they've all taken off 
and they're up against a sandstone cliff. If you look at the top, you can see people up on that cliff. Yeah, that's why it's confusing. <laughs> How often does that happen? Um, this is an annual, actually the rally is held twice a year. Um, and like I said, it's got a couple hundred balloons. So you'll see this type of site pretty often. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that cool? How many balloons would have been at this one? About 250. 250 and just out of curiosity how do 250 balloons get in the air at the same time it's like well you go in waves so you, you kind of uh, take turns okay okay so when you're in a in a rally do you have to go from point a to point b in a certain time or the fastest person from point a to point b <laughs> no if they have a competition it'll be um accuracy based and they'll have a target and you need to drop a small bean bag on the target. And there'll be a, the target will be open till like say 9 a.m. and you have to do it within your time frame. Um, but it doesn't matter who gets there first, it's just who gets there closest. Oh, who gets the closest? Oh, isn't that interesting? So if, do you win anything if you actually put the balloon on the target? Uh, well, you're not supposed to put the balloon on the target, just the baggie. <laughs> Uh, you'll get disqualified if you actually land on the target. Um, <laughs> but you'd win because nobody else could hit the target because you'd be on it. Exactly. That's why they disqualify you. They'll usually put up some uh, prizes. Depends on the sponsor. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's, you know, just whatever. A local artist puts up something or a TV or something. Yeah, okay. I was thinking I'm going to say they <laughs> probably wouldn't want me on. <laughs> In the rally at all. But yeah, okay, Bob Wild, nope, disqualified. But I haven't left yet. No, you're disqualified. We know what you're going to do, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's... you might have <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is uh, a smaller rally. This one has probably about 25 balloons. Oh, okay. And, and where, this... where is this one taken? Uh, this is in a small town called Salina, Utah. And as you can see, there's a lot of... Uh, cattle there. They also grow hay and various other crops. Yeah, okay. So it's a river valley between two mountain ranges. So because I'm not a balloon pilot, so is there different safety precautions between flying over the mountains than on the flatlands like this? Um, mountains are challenging because you get different wind patterns that you have to be really careful of. Um, you get rotors co coming off of mountains. A okay. uh, rotor is when the wind comes over the top and then creates a whirlwind on the other side. And um, you might remember I said we have absolute control over up and down. Well, yep. rotors and thermals take that up and down control away. Okay. So yeah. you want to stay away from those. All right. So here's a tough question. Come on back to, to me. Stop your screen share. We've got a minute left. Here's a tough okay. question for you. Because this is always interesting. There we go. There we go. You're back. What's your scariest moment in a balloon? Uh, the scariest moment in the balloon? Uh, well, I'd say the time the most accidents happen is landing. Oh, okay. That's yeah, when so you're you... closest to the ground, and when you take off, you can control the conditions you're taking off in. When you're landing, conditions may have changed. Wind might have picked up. You're not in the same place. So landing to the most challenging time. <laughs> yeah, I guess you don't have any control over it. It's one of those things. Um, so if you're a good pilot, you don't tip over the basket? No. If it's windy, you might tip over, but usually it's planned, and uh, that's usually when people have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your camera gear and away you go. You okay. Then the A ticket. Yeah, okay. So if people want to see more of your work, Jenny, where can they go to see more of your work? Um. My website is wolfheartimages.com, and that's uh, W-O-L-F-H-A-R-T-T. -T. Okay. That's my last name, Wolf. My last name. Yep. Uh, I'm yep. also on Instagram under Wolfheart and Pinterest under Wolfheart. You're on G, G Plus, Google Plus. Are you on 500 Plus. pixels? Uh, not 500 pix. Okay. So if anybody wants to see more of Jenny's work, we're going to put her on to the closing credits. And unfortunately, like everything else around here, we've run out of time. 
So I want to thank Jenny. I had an awesome time. It was great talking to you. I'm hopefully we'll, uh, when you come back from your 10-week uh, road trip, maybe we'll have you back on and we'll see how you did. Because I'm sure okay. you'll have about 10,000 pictures. <laughs> 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 and I know because we discussed this a minute ago, you don't blog, so I will I be saying <laughs> we're not I'm enough on though. I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> yeah, I understand I that one. I promise to get better. I'll blog this trip. <laughs> All right, blog this trip. See how many people we can get you going. So right. ag again, we're out of time. I want, like I said, I want to thank you for showing on, showing up. I want to thank Shaw TV for letting us use their studio, and we'll see you next week on the two photo nuts. Thanks for watching. Bye.